Hi, I'm David Robinson from KirklandGold.com and I'm standing here in front of the Sir Harry Oaks Chateau, the mansion he built with gold fortunes found in Kirkland Lake. They've extracted over 24 million ounces of gold and counting over the past century. That's $50 billion in today's currency. No wonder this place is known as the Mile of Gold. Three and a half kilometers to the west of us here, we find Macassa Mine, where they've chased gold to a depth of over 7,000 feet until they ran into the mystery, the Amakugami Creek Fault, where a multi-billion dollar gold deposit suddenly disappears. Behind me is Macassa Mine and the Amakugami Creek. Beneath this unassuming body of water lies a 13 kilometer long fault that has shifted all the ground to the west, southward, and with it unimaginable wealth to whoever can solve the mystery. At Kirkland Gold, we've been working on this mystery for four decades, and we want to share our findings with you. From old school techniques like detailed ground mapping, diamond drill coring, and assay work, to more modern techniques like ground-based magnetic surveys and ultra-modern aerial drone magnetic surveys. Come join us as we seek the rest of the Kirkland Lake Gold Camp, the second mile. Our claims are located just five kilometers from Macassa Mine, currently in production, and we're surrounded by major players in the Kirkland Lake Gold Camp, including Agnico Eagle Mines and Ore Finders. In addition to this, there's an active drill program just to the north of us. In addition to world-class geology, we're conveniently located close to Highway 11, just touching Highway 66. Major power lines go through the property. The natural gas pipeline just kisses the other boundary. The major rail line is just to the north of our property. All of these factors reduce time and effort and expenses for exploration. In the 1990s, geologist Douglas Robinson, with over 50 years of geological experience, staked over 100 claim units, representing 15 kilometers parallel to the southern edge of the Larder Lake Cadillac break system. After mapping an exhaustive 3,000 acres and running over 200 kilometers of geophysical analysis, these claims were kept. The others that were released were quickly snapped up by local prospectors and junior mining companies and have been explored continuously ever since. We know they'll do well by them, but why keep these ones? What makes these claims special? Early on, I recognized the danger of static thinking. The concept was developed in the Kirkland Lake camp that no ore exists beyond the west side of the, Kirk of the Amakugami Creek Fault and it was believed that the ore in Kirkland Lake was fully understood. Then the South Mines complex and its redoubt structures were discovered. This resulted in a renaissance of thinking, and we believe that our claims are the best chance of finding the second mile of gold. While the claim location is both strategic and convenient, detailed mapping is essential. At the end of World War II, Dr. J. E. Thompson was tasked with mapping E.B., Otto, and Tech Townships. He mapped prominent outcrops, and while he discovered a number of promising finds, what he missed pushed back development by decades. We've had the privilege of owning and developing claims in both E.B. and Otto Townships, just west of Amakugami Creek, it's allowed us to dig deeper, both literally and figuratively, and discover things that Dr. Thompson missed, including a number of large veins. Six kilometers behind me is the Macassa Mine at the Amakugami Creek Fault. We are here at the S vein, which is a microcosm of the geometry and the events we observe at the Macassa Mine where the ore is cut off by the and the Kugami Creek Fault. As you see, the vein on my left side, which is the west side, is offset one and a half meters south relative to the vein on the east side of me, 
This is the relationship we see at the Amakurumi Creek Fault, which terminates the Mile of Gold. As you can see on this regional map, the red colored area is a large intrusive structure called the Otto Stock. The land west of the Amakurumi Creek Fault is shifted south relative to the land on the east. That is why we staked our crane route slightly south of the trend line that runs through the Kirkland Lake camp. We are at the Reed Trench vein viewing a false hosted quartz pyrite vein six kilometers west of the Anacogamy Creek Fault in the Macassa Mine. This vein is parallel to and the alteration is consistent with the mineralization expected along the Larder Lake and Cadillac breaks. This vein is also parallel to and 25 meters north of a 150 meter long three frequency EM conductor. The south contact of this vein has preserved a fault pressure consisting of angular to well-rounded fragments of varying appearance and varying alteration. This variance indicates this vein has been conducive to fluid flow, which is favorable for gold mineralization. This vein is also highly fractured, and the fracturing is filled with carbonate, sericite, and pyrite mineralization. This places the vein within the event of the Kirkland Lake Lauder Lake mineralization. The highest gold content is expected to be in the bullseye and a narrow gold-bearing quartz vein similar to this and those veins mined in Kirkland Lake. In addition to the discovery of a number of large veins, detailed mapping has revealed wide alteration zones. The tricky thing about albite is that it weathers recessively, as you can see here in this local sample. The implications of this are that our best showings are found in low-lying areas, such as the cedar swamp behind me. While not particularly fun for line cutting, the golden lining in this story is that what Dr. Thompson could not have mapped has been preserved for us to discover. Elbite alteration is a vector that leads to gold ore, and it's the host rock of much of the ore associated with the Larder Lake Kirkland Lake break. This is the reed showing which is an extreme case of pyritic albite alteration. And this grades up to 18.8 grams per metric ton. This extreme pyritic albite alteration is also the bullseye to concentric zones of vein alteration. Vein-related pyritic albite alteration occurs within 400 meters of this center. It appears sericitic pyritic alteration occurs beyond 400 meters. Chloritic alteration accompanies veins furthest from the center. We find ourselves on an albite outcrop, plunging down underneath the swamp. We are so close to solving the mystery, and this is a frustrating development. We need to know what's underneath this swamp, and for this we have a solution. It's been a bit of a hike, but we find ourselves on the north side of the swamp now, 225 meters away. On the south side of the swamp, we found that albite rich reed showing, the plunge beneath the swamp, taking with it the key to the mystery. We need to see underneath the swamp. Welcome to the drill site. Dr. Thompson mapped this very outcrop in the 1940s noting the similarities between it and the Larder Lake break geology. If he noted the albite zone running through the center of it, he made no note of it, as at the time it wasn't understood to be a good host rock for gold. We are excited to announce that this property is drill ready. And while we lack a half million dollars to run a full program on our own, we've initiated the first core conveniently underneath the swamp. Our drill team 
has pulled over a million feet of core from South America to the subarctic and has decades worth of experience in Kirkland Lake in underground and in surface exploration. And they are excited at the core they are seeing. And for the first time, we share this core with you. This core is carbonate alteration to 6.1 meters, which can be seen on this outcrop on my left. At 6.1 meters, the core changes to a pale gray, extreme quartz albite flooding with quartz albite veining and 3% extremely fine grained pyrite. The original rock textures and rock type of this rock have been completely destroyed by the alteration. There is no break in the quartz albite pyrite alteration in this core from 6.1 to 23.2 meters. It appears the two albite outcrops are reaching out to join one another. Even more exciting than the albite surrounding this swamp is the gold it contains. The first 6.1 meters of this hole contain 0.5 grams per ton. The next 17.1 meters of core with continuous pyritic quartz flooding was graded 1.0 grams per ton. This showed increasing gold content with depth underneath the swamp. Just as we have traced the albite from one side of the swamp to the other, we need to do the same for gold. Without that, the mystery is not solved. Three measure samples were taken by myself, an MNDM geologist and an independent geologist, and these samples verified each other. The first sample graded 14.03 grams per metric ton over 0.40 meters. The second sample was taken at the same location and graded 8.02 grams per metric ton over 0.60 meters. The third cut graded 8.89 grams per metric ton. Strong, independently verified assays are reasons to be confident in this project. If the geological and analytical trends continue, we have solved the mystery of the Amakugami Creek Fault. Detailed mapping, coring, and assays are effective century-old tools on exposure outcrops such as this, powerful enough to bring Kirkland Lake's current and past mines into production, and they remain powerful tools to this day. You may have noticed that a number of the great finds on our property are named after Jim Reed, an old-time prospector who's been working this land for almost as long as Kirkland Lake itself. The main reason that Jim has not lived his entire life in Kirkland Lake is he's technically older than the hospital and was born just south of here. It was his initiative that is the reason that we have these great claims today. I ended up at Kanagami having bought a tourist resort, cottages and, and uh, a restaurant. And this seemed to be a central spot for uh, a time when the province and the universities were putting groups of geologists in and we had the accommodation for them. For a number of years, we ran like this with uh, uh, a geologist on every side of me talking, <laughs> talking geology. I couldn't help but pick up the bug again. And one thing, then finally, uh, the government decided to do a geophysical survey. It's about 1980 or somewhere there. And the fly past over top, dragging a bomb underneath the plane. And so, of course, this roused a lot of interest. Uh, but I kind of thought maybe the whole area there was staked, but I soon found out it wasn't. Uh, these actually some of the geologists put in the wise of the fact when they're coming out. So I was one of the first guys in there to get a map with the uh, good showings on with the, on the map, best spots. And these experts told me which, which claims should be grabbed up as quickly as you could. So uh, we went to work seeking them, 20 claims in all, because we thought this is the place where the next mine in the Curtin Lake District is going to go. It looks that good. And other ones, I think other people are jealous of what we got. Geophysics is rewriting the history of the Kirkland Lake Gold Camp, revealing secrets 
in the electric and magnetic fields beneath our feet. Geophysical tools have evolved tremendously over our ownership of these claims. The tool that we initially used is the Syntrex WalkMag rendering total magnetic field readings at two meter intervals. In 1995, we pioneered the use of the WalkMag for prospecting purposes. Doug is the reason that it became a ministry approved exploration technique and the industry norm that it is today. The old industry standard for magnetic surveys was 12 and a half or 25 meter spacings. This is necessitated by the requirement of recording each and every reading. If you don't understand why this was impractical, you do not understand black flies. These widely spaced readings were inadequate to properly define the profiles over alteration zones. With the two and a half meter spacings, we were able to get accurate and concise definition of the limits of the alteration and the extent of the alteration. The walk mags two meter resolution allowed us to define the magnetic profiles of the alteration zones for the very first time. These drill ready targets are better resolved because of our willingness to innovate. The walk mag was critical in helping us discover a number of targets throughout the property but the frustration of having our best material hiding under cedar swamps has made a constraint of line cutting almost impossible to do it at the intervals we need. For that, we need the next level of technology. We need an airborne drone survey. Air mag surveys are amazing and are the next step in technological innovation in mining. What took our line cutting and geophysics team two seasons to complete back in the day, this drone is gonna complete in the next few hours. We'll be flying two surveys. First survey using a smaller air photo unit to create a digital surface model. That digital surface model will then be used to create a safe flight path above terrain for the larger mag drone. The larger unit is a heavy lift UAV with a high sensitivity magnetometer affixed to it. The use of UAV allows us to fly closer to the ground and contour terrain more accurately than a conventional aircraft. What's not to love about drone air mag surveys? They can fly closer to the ground. They can skirt the power lines, unlike airplane surveys. That closeness gets the noisiness of the data down to almost nothing. They're accurate to within centimeters and they can sample between the lines, something we could never do as line cutters. They leave no environmental footprint, and best of all, it means less time in the swamp for line cutters and technicians. So thank you for exploring this mystery with us. We're conveniently close to key infrastructure and close to the end of the first mile of gold at the Amakugami Creek Fault. We've traced the evidence of this mystery by detailed mapping and geophysics of over 100 claim units, saving the best for last. On these final units, we have discovered the bullseye, gold-bearing albite, in an area that appears to be nearly 225 meters across. Initial coring work shows a trend to increasing depth and quality of the albite content of the bullseye, especially trending towards and below the wetlands no one could map until now. Assay results suggest that the gold-bearing albite could be ore grade quality. And finally, ground-based geophysics identified more exploration targets and our drone-based survey promises a quantity and quality of geophysical data that we could not have dreamed of when we started this venture 40 years ago. To properly develop a claim group, you need a combination of old school geology and cutting edge technology. You need book smarts working hand in hand with the wisdom of the ages. You need an experienced team that understands the old ways of geology yet embraces new methodology. And because of this, we are confident that we have solved the mystery of the Amakugami Creek Fault and established the second mile of gold. Will you join us in this ride? <laughs>